Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of ED Outdoors. I know it's been a hot minute. I haven't posted a video in so, so long. Um, but hey, we're about to get started on a lot more videos. Um, let's see. Hunting season didn't go too well. Uh, didn't do a lot of duck hunting at all. Um, I only killed three deer this season. Oh, two deer. So, didn't do a whole lot of videos with that. Um, so, the springs will be a little bit better for us. So, there's Denver over there. Just being Denver. I'll show you him in a second. So, you guys remember the quail? Uh, we're down to five jumbo quaternion quails. Um, I did have 16 for the longest. And then I took a weekend trip. I came back and they were all gone. Uh, a few did return back to the pen. Uh, Denver retrieved a few of them. And, um, you know, we were able to recover five. But the rest, they, they, they got out. Um, also, if you guys notice, we have some new members to the clan. Uh, we have a few chickens. And we have a few ducks. All right, so the chickens, they are, we have four different breeds. Um, I know we have the Rhode Island Reds. Denver, calm down. We have the Rhode Island Reds. Um, we have these fellas right here that have the fuzzy feet. Uh, we have a few of those. We have the black chickens. I don't know what breed they are. Um, and then I have another breed that um, they're the Easter egg laying chickens that lay the blue eggs, whatever. As far as ducks, I have uh, three farm ducks. Uh, those are the brown ones. Whenever they gr they grow up, they're going to be white. And then the yellow ducks you see there, those are um, Ruans. And they are basically domestic mallards. Um, they're the same coloring as mallards do, but they're obviously domesticated. Yeah, from under there. I'm trying to get them spread out so you guys can see them. So the ducks, they are humongous. They grow real fast. I can tell already that one is going to be a female. Uh, maybe. Maybe not, but they, um, they're they gonna start getting their, their feathers here shortly. Right now, those ducks are only uh, a month old. I've had them for four weeks, and they're already ginormous in size compared to the quail. Those are jumbo quaternion quails, and those are the ducks. I grew them real quick. You see the chickens there, and then there's one of the, the black chickens. The Rhode Island Reds, so yeah. These are my birds. Uh, they live out in this in this enclosement or in this whatever you want to call it. And I have the heat lamp on them still. Make sure that they stay nice and toasty. Uh, temperatures right now are in the 80s, um, so they're not cold by any means. Um, and I have this pen I built. We built this enclosure, and it is 10 foot by 8 foot. Uh, basically, I built a box frame out of some scrap lumber I had that I picked up like a year ago. Uh, those are big two by six planks. I cut those down. They were 12 foot cutting out to 10 foot and made 10 foot in length and eight foot in width. Um, I took chicken wire and I put chicken wire all the way around it. I made this door, see here behind me, uh, made a door. And then over the top, I took uh, netting that I got from online. It's like a poultry netting to protect. I did the top with the netting because I don't want to have too much weight. Like with leaves fall to like weigh down the chicken wire and also went around the edge um, with quarter inch um, wire mesh and I did that to prevent snakes from crawling into the holes through the um, chicken wire so I did that to keep our birds nice protect have them did have them over here behind me in a smaller enclosure the quail but obviously the quail need less space than these giant ducks and these chickens so since putting them all over here together they live together they have two feeders right there those feeders they last maybe i don't know like eh, a week or so those two feeders with all these birds in here um water i have a water pan right here it needs to be cleaned out i dump this out daily put fresh water in it the ducks they like to splash around they don't have their the big feathers yet um there's another water pail for the ducks to get in small pail for the quail to reach and they run through water like crazy so I have three one gallon water waterers here. Uh, also for the chickens, we have like a little, uh, this little stick, I kind of stuck it in one side of the ground, bent it. That's like a little perch and sit on. They like to sit and perch on top of the little roof I have there for them. That's a little shelter I built, a little lean-to, to kind of keep them out of the elements, keep their food dry. Um, later on, I'm gonna build a nesting box. But in the meantime, I have this little crate, just a little plastic crate, I cut a hole in it, or broke a hole in it and they go inside if they feel like they need more shelter or whatever. And then of course a little branch for them to kind of perch on. Uh, chickens, they love perching. Um, 
and the rest of the birds they don't really care about it too much but um, yeah the heating lamp we don't need it um, but I still have it just in case it gets too cool for them at night they obviously if it's too warm they go to the side where it's cooler at and vice versa if they need to uh, with the quail you see the ones with the red chested ones those are the males and the spotted uh, black chest those are females uh, they have been laying eggs I have been collecting eggs uh, the quail have at least there's one quail egg right there um, Denver stop chasing the ducks it's hard to have a, uh, a bird dog that chase that's another quail egg over there two quail eggs I'm hoping that they will uh, hatch shortly because uh, I want some new some more quail but it's hard having a bird dog that chases birds because I don't want them I don't want to tell them not to and then when it's time for me to train them to you know chase birds he's gonna be confused as to you know what to get when I get I'm gonna try to grab one of these ducks these ducks are huge uh, this big guy here his name is Texas um, Texas. It's okay. It's okay, bud. Okay. Obviously, save Texas because he's the biggest. Uh, the key is that they name these chickens, but of course, you know, you can't really keep track of the chickens because they're all, I mean, it's, I guess I can tell you, I have six ducks and we have, we started with 13 uh, chickens. We're down to 10. Uh, three drowned in the water pail uh, whenever they were too small they got in they couldn't get out uh, so I put this log in there for them to climb out and then our five quail so that's our total you know five quail six ducks and ten chickens um, so hopefully shortly I'm gonna build a nesting nesting box to where the quail the uh, chickens can start laying eggs hopefully and then um, yeah we'll just kind of kind of see what they do what they produce um as far as like eggs go all right so basically that's it um everyday denver stop let me show you top of the little enclosure and uh i mean not the enclosure but the little lean-to and perch on top of it it's one of the, the black chickens right there i don't know the breed if you know the breed coming below i forget the breed i can look it up um on the attractive supply website i better find out but, um, but yeah. As far as uh, upkeep, they're real simple to upkeep. Ducks are more involved because ducks like to get in the water and, and get the water dirty. So you have to refill this water like every day or every other day. Ducks don't actually don't need water. People, you know, people think they do, but they don't need need water. Uh, they just need fresh water to keep their uh, nostrils moist, like. They have, they have their beaks and they have their nostrils. They have to keep those moist, but they can go without without having water to swim in. Uh, chickens, they obviously need water. Uh, they're easier to upkeep. Um, you just put them in there, let them rip. They don't need much space at all. And of course, quail. Quail is most laid back, low maintenance, any type of pet I've ever had in my life. They just do what they do. Like I can fill up fill up their, their feeder, fill up two uh, two gallons of uh, water and that'll last them a week like a week straight won't have to look at them at all for a week and they're just fine so uh, if you guys are interested in birds that's that's what I would suggest quail to begin with start with um, and then chickens and then ducks all right I got the water replenished fresh water when they see fresh water they act like they haven't had water in days uh, they like I said, do make a mess They'll use the dirty water to clean themselves, but they don't really drink it. Um, so it ends up being to where, you know, every other day you have to get the water uh, cleaned out. Get it, get fresh water because they'll drink from these green containers, but these pails, they use those to like bathe and to keep their beaks wet, play in. And the quail even like using that small pan right there to uh, soak. But they're all out running around, ripping doing what birds do looking all cute and majestic the um, the yellow uh, what they call ruins ducks 
that yellow one right there i think it's going to be a male um but his name or her name is idaho the brown one with the stripes on her on her, on her eyes that is doesn't have a name but i think that's a female that one right there and then that i believe is a male so she has two two drakes in the hen and as far as these big brown ones um i don't know as far as that goes because I th say i think they're all going to be they're going to be white whenever they grow grow old but we're gonna keep an eye on them the next couple of weeks this is literally like every single like two to three days that come back here to check they've already gotten so much bigger uh the chickens they grow pretty fast the ducks is just ridiculous like they started out uh whenever we first bought them they were three weeks old two weeks old they were the size of the quail like that full grown quail right there was that duck was this size like two weeks ago and it's already this size now so they grow pretty quick uh chickens i mean they grow pretty quick too but oh yeah this is their little their home their little enclosure like i said got the netting up top uh it's pretty tough stuff it's bird proof predator proof i got a tarp over the back to to help prevent rain to keep that area dry that back side i want it to be dry uh got the little lean to for for that for the house uh for shelter and got the little uh crate for shelter get back there and then um two feeders that like i said those two feeders will last about a week um at the rate that they eat on the ground right there you see that scratch that it has millworms cracked corn a bunch of sunflower seeds stuff like that that birds eat i just pour some of that out they like to scratch around for bugs and such and then the two feeders got a log for them to perch on a little perching branch and a random branch for them to also perch on and like i said that perch on the roof and then the heater and a bunch a bunch a bunch a bunch of water ah, get back you're not going in there yeah he wants those birds he only harasses the birds whenever i'm out, out i'm out here uh, if the girls come out to feed or to pick up eggs whatever never he he doesn't he'll come over and you know He's interested in the birds, but whenever he's out here just living with the birds, he doesn't even bother. But hopefully, um, either this summer, I'm hoping this summer I can start training him to retrieve. And uh, when duck season starts this upcoming year, 2021, hopefully he'll be ready by then. We can do some duck hunting. But there he is. Remember, come here, boy. But he's a, uh, he he's a lab beagle mix. Uh, he's excited. He's energetic, but he is just. A young pup, lots of energy, and he needs to be he needs to be trained to where he can, um, yeah, he can just be more more manageable. Mama said that he's supposed to be an inside dog, but he don't like being inside because he he's he is uh, yeah he don't like being inside. He likes being outside, running around, being in the yard. I like having him outside, especially now when it's when it's not cold, uh, because there I have seen raccoons, I have seen possums in the area. We live literally the bayou is literally like across the street from my house. So, from my, my, my backyard, it's flies. Um, so, having him out here keeps the wildlife at bay uh, to protect these birds to where they're not out here, you know, just vulnerable from the, the elements. Anyway, again, wrap this up. Thank y'all for watching, tuning in. Give you guys a quick update, and then um, I'll be seeing y'all a lot more often. Uh, I'm gonna get back to my weekly post at least once a week. And I'm gonna try to do more vlogs like this, just sit down and talk. And, um, once I find my GoPro, get my GoPro back up and running, do some fishing, uh, crawl fishing. We're going to start that probably this weekend or next weekend. Um, so, yeah, thank you all for watching and tuning in. Thank you all for your continued support. Uh, see you guys next time from Media Outdoors. Media out.